Hello everyone. An important aspect of plant genetic engineering is the exploitation of totipotency of plant cells, which enables regeneration of plants from a few genetically transformed cells. This property of plant cells has been known for over a century now and has evolved into an important technology for plant propagation. Manipulation of plant cells or tissues for genetic transformation is usually carried out under aseptic conditions so that the environment and the growth medium can be controlled to ensure a high frequency of regeneration of transformed plants. Handling plant cells or tissues under aseptic conditions also enables early selection of potential transformants which can then be taken forward to form plants. In this module, we shall study how plant cells and tissues are manipulated to make them amenable for genetic transformation and subsequent regeneration to get transgenic plants. The learning objectives for this module are basics of plant tissue culture in which we shall study the preparation of plant material for culture, the growth media used and the environmental conditions under which the cultures are maintained, types of culture systems used in plant genetic engineering in which three main types of culture systems will be dealt with namely protoplast cultures, callus cultures and tissue cultures. Regeneration of plants from transformed tissues where we will see how plants are regenerated by the process of organogenesis or embryogenesis. The ability to grow plant cells in isolation on a nutrient media was explored as early as 1902 by Haberland and this idea laid the foundation for research and culture of plant cells and tissues. Root cultures and callus cultures were obtained from various plants. It was in 1958 that F.C. Stewart demonstrated the totipotency of plant cells and was able to generate a new plant from single cells placed on appropriate media containing nutrients and growth hormones. The techniques of tissue culture was well established in the 60s and was exploited for clonal propagation of plants as well as for obtaining secondary metabolites of pharmaceutical importance. Since the 90s, this technique has been extensively used to obtain transgenic plants from genetically transformed plant tissues, cells and protoplasts. Tissues or cell cultures are initiated from young, actively growing tissues, often from cells that are in the metastomatic state or differentiated parenchymatous cells of leaves, internodes, etc. Since the cultures are raised under exenic conditions, it is important to surface sterilize the plant material called explants before placing them on media for in vitro growth. Surface sterilization is carried out using various chemicals which disinfect the surface of the explants. The surface sterilized explants are placed on the nutrient media which have been standardized for various types of plants and tissues. A commonly used medium is the Murashige and Skoog's medium which consists of five major elements required for plant growth namely nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium and magnesium and eight micronutrients. In addition, cultured tissues require a supplement of amino acids and vitamin B to sustain growth. Sucrose is the commonly added source of carbon since the cultured tissues are heterotrophic. The medium may be used in the solid form where it is gelled by adding agar or in the liquid form. The optimum pH for culturing plant tissues is 5.8. Two main classes of hormones are used in plant tissue culture media to induce cell division, growth and differentiation. These include the auxins which play an important role in inducing cell division and cell expansion. Auxins are also used for inducing roots in in vitro grown shoots. Auxins are generally used in the concentration range of 10 to the power of minus 6 to 10 to the power of minus 4 for growth promotion and many of them show herbicidal activity at higher concentrations. Besides auxins, Cytokinins are also used in most culture media and they induce cell division and differentiation. The in vitro response of the cultured cells or tissues depends on the ratio of auxin to cytokinin used. With higher auxins favoring callus or root growth and higher cytokinins favoring shoot bud differentiation. 
Manipulation of the levels of these two hormones is carried out over several subcultures in order to get the development of a complete plant. Three types of culture systems are commonly used for transformation applications. These include callus and cell suspension cultures as well as protoplast cultures. Callus and cell suspension cultures enable selection of transformed cells on a selection medium, which can then be developed into complete plants. The cells of callus or cell suspensions are large vacuolated parenchymata cells which are maintained in an undifferentiated state. Callus cultures are grown in solid media while cell suspensions are grown in liquid media, which are aerated by shaking the flask containing the culture. Shaking also reduces the clumping of cells. Growth hormone concentrations are varied to optimize growth of cells. These cultures show exponential growth and need to be subcultured onto fresh media once they reach the plateau phase. Some plant transformation techniques like electroporation or PEG mediated transformation require cells without cell walls. This is possible by isolating protoplasts from plant tissues by treating them with cellulases and pectinases. These enzymes remove the cell walls and leave intact protoplasts which can be cultured on an isotonic nutrient medium. The protoplasts regenerate a cell wall within 24 to 48 hours and undergo divisions to form callus, which can then be used for obtaining plants. The advantage of this technique is that each callus mass is formed from single protoplast and this makes it easier to identify the transformed calli on selection medium. The plant cell and tissue cultures need to be maintained at appropriate light and temperature regimes for getting the desired growth and differentiation response. A typical incubation room for plant tissue cultures has control for adjusting the light in intensity and duration. Temperature of the room is maintained at around 25 degrees centigrade which is optimal for growth of plant cells. The cultures are also grown under high humidity conditions to prevent desiccation of the fragile tissues. When plant cells or tissues which are in a differentiated state are placed on a culture medium, they undergo developmental reprogramming since the hormonal gradients existing in natural conditions are perturbed. First, the cells dedifferentiate to attain a stem cell like or meristematic state. The cells in this state are isodiametric, thin walled and have prominent nuclei and show rapid cell division. Depending on the ratio of auxins and cytokinins added to the culture medium, the cells exit the dedifferentiation state and may either proliferate to form an undifferentiated callus mass or may show redifferentiation to form new shoot buds. Hence, cultured cells may show pluripotency dependent on the growth hormone concentrations used. In the absence of growth hormones, Fate of the dedifferentiated cells leads to cell death. There are two routes by which cultured cells give rise to complete plants. In the organogenesis route, shoot buds are seen to arise from the callus developing from the explant tissue. The callus may be prominent and show shoot buds developing from it called indirect organogenesis or only a few callus cells are formed which show differentiation of shoot buds immediately called direct organogenesis. The shoot buds arise from a few cells deep within the callus where the hormone gradients favor the organization of new shoot epical meristems. The shoot buds can then give rise to a well formed shoot which can then be transferred to a different medium to induce adventitious rooting from the base of the shoot. The second route is through embryogenesis in which the callus cells differentiate to form de novo embryos called somatic embryos which are generally seen on the surface of the callus. Here the embryo initials arise from 2-3 callus cells that get the proper hormone cues from neighboring cells. The somatic embryos have a bipolar axis and can easily be separated from the callus tissues and germinated to form complete plants. Embryogenic calli are a good starting material for plant transformation. 
since selection of transform embryos often shows uniformly transformed plants. On the other hand, calli that differentiate into shoot buds may often give rise to chimeric shoots which require additional selection procedures. Plants obtained in vitro are photomyxotrophic and show poor stomatal regulation. These plants need to be hardened so that they attain photosynthetic competency and also are able to regulate stomatal movements. This is carried out by gradually reducing the carbon supplement in the medium and by increasing the light intensity. The plant also needs to get acclimated to drier conditions prevailing outside the culture vessel which is done by leaving the culture vessels open for increased durations when they show functional photosynthesis. The plants are now removed from the culture vessel and planted into an appropriate potting mixture. At first maintain under control light, temperature and humidity conditions of a greenhouse and finally transfer to the field under natural conditions. The whole process of plant culture from growing X plants in vitro to obtaining complete plants growing under natural conditions may take as long as 4 to 6 months. The module can be summarized as plant cell and tissue culture is an important part of the procedure for getting genetically transformed plants. It involves growing of plant tissues or cells also called X plants in an appropriate medium containing nutrients and hormones. The X plant cells undergo a process of dedifferentiation in which they acquire a stem cell state. Depending on the growth hormones added, these cells can further grow as undifferentiated calli or differentiate to form plant organs. Calli or cell suspensions as well as protoplasts are suitable for genetic transformation since selection of transformants is easier at these stages. These tissues can then grow into complete plants through the process of organogenesis or somatic embryogenesis. The regenerated plants require to get acclimated to natural environmental conditions before they can be planted in the field. Thank you.